Hi, this is TH Colleen for Porpoise Robotics. This is um, Zinzin Pandy from Porpoise Robotics. Easy Money from Porpoise Robotics. Cesar Arvalo from Porpoise Robotics. This is Robotics with a Purpose, and today's purpose is to teach you how to create your own electricity out in the field where there is no other source of electricity. This thing I've created here using a perforated board, perforated board with a torus, that's a ferrite core, torus, which is just basically iron circle or an iron donut, and a resistor, 220 ohm resistor, and a NPN transistor and four LEDs. This is what I call my tab torch. Tab torch meaning it's a light or a torch which can be used in villages around the world, whether we're working in Africa, we're working in the Middle East, we're working in Nepal, we're working in Central America, South America, without needing a source of electricity from a conventional source. Now, how do we do that? Well, in about 1999, a circuit was invented using these simple materials that you can buy for about a dollar at Radio Shack. It really is simple. It's just a torus wrapped in wire, a resistor, and a transistor. And the idea was that what happens is an electromagnetic field is created whenever you charge this with a battery. And then as the magnetic field collapses, it pumps electrons through the transistor to the LEDs. And people were amazed by it because it meant that you could take a dead battery like this one. See how cruddy this battery is? Yeah. This battery is about 0.7 volts. It's effectively dead. It was tossed in the trash. But since it still has a little bit of electricity, the theory was that you could pump that electricity up and get useful work out of it using this jewel thief, J-A-U-L, which means power, a thief that steals power. And normally an LED takes three volts, and this wouldn't light it even if it was a good battery, because a good battery only puts out 1.5 volts. So you'd need two batteries in your flashlight from one of those LEDs. But the jewel thief was so spectacular, it was able to take less than a one and a half volts and turn on the lights. Now, that's a pretty spectacular result that you can take a single battery and turn on a three-volt LED, not to mention four of them, and, yeah, you can see that there, and that you could do it with a battery that had gone down as low as 0.7 volts. I started working with this, and I began to realize it might be possible to go down further, so I kept working with dead batteries until I got a battery that was a half a volt, so down from 1.5 all the way to 0.5. That's dead, 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 and it still went on. And then something occurred to me. If you can use a half a volt to light a three volt LED through this circuit, what else produces half a volt? Now we know that many chemical reactions make half a volt. And one thing I realized when I was in Nepal in a village is that when you oxidize aluminum, like this tab of a, of a beer can or a Coke can, it also produces half a volt. So I started experimenting. And I asked myself, how do I get it to oxidize, given that aluminum is already oxidized? It's, it's inert. I mean, once the can is exposed to air, the chemical reaction's over. I realized from a chemistry class I taught years ago at Marlboro School that if you take sodium hydroxide, which I have these pellets of in here, which is Drano, drain cleaner. If you take drain cleaner and you spill it on aluminum, it starts to bubble. That means it's etching away at the oxide coating, releasing hydrogen gas. So I reasoned, maybe if I put some Drano into the aluminum in a little cup and saturated a sponge with the Drano. So I took some of these crystals and I poured them in, okay? And I took some water, or Gatorade, doesn't matter what water Julie works. And I started melting those tabs. And then I took a cleaning pad, stainless steel cleaning pad, and I hooked up the negative here. And I hooked up the positive here. Look what happens. You get electricity from nothing more than a beer tab. And it turns out this beer tab will last about two days, giving light to a villager. Enough to read by, and you'll see that. Enough to read by for two days, and then when that's done, you just find another one. Now tell me. Can we find these? Yeah. Yes. Everywhere in the world, right? So who's giving us the lie that we need nuclear power plants and we need fossil fuels and these big infrastructure to give, like, they want to build a nuclear power plant in every African village because the poor African villagers don't have power, so let's give them nuclear power. That's a control thing. Here, every African villager can produce these aluminum oxide batteries 
And the only thing that you need is more set sources of alu- scrap aluminum, even aluminum foil off your dinner plate, and you need some crystals of Drano. Now, what if you don't have Drano in African village? What do you do? Send it to them. Could send it to them because it's just a powder. Yeah. But you can make it. This is sodium hydroxide. Every villager who knows how to make soap knows that if you burn trees and make ash and then let that ash go through water, you can get out of the tree ash potassium hydroxide, which is the same thing chemically as sodium hydroxide. works the same way. So since they all know how to make soap in the village by taking tree ashes to get potassium hydroxide, they can make their own crystals of this, pour it in, and the only thing then they need is once a piece of stainless steel, which never gets used up, a sponge or a paper towel, doesn't matter what, to hold the fluid, and then a source of scrap aluminum. And you can see when you turn out the light, go ahead and turn out the light out there. You can see that it's bright enough to read by. See that? Wow. Which means that, that you can actually uh, read at night in the village, any place where there's no electricity. I'm taking this up to Nepal, camping. And it gets brighter depending on how much uh, stainless steel you have and how much electrolyte. The point is that we can get it brighter and brighter and produce more and more just by putting it in series and parallel circuit and increasing the amounts. But the thing is we have an endless supply of these. So when I go around, and easy remembers on the airplane, the stewardess is coming and they were contributing these. People are throwing away cans. I met a, a homeless couple the other day at the train uh, downtown, and they asked for my Coke can. And I said, thanks, but let me take this off. And the guy said, oh, okay, why do you want to take that off? I said, well, you don't need it, right, because you're just selling the can. He said, yeah. I said, well, this actually gives me electricity. So then I taught this homeless couple how we do this. And now, from now on, they said whenever they collect aluminum cans, they're going to pop these off and put them in their pocket because that's where the future is. And then they can still sell the can for the same amount of money. These are valuable, my friends. So if you start thinking about using aluminum as your source of electricity, then you have a bright future ahead, if you'll excuse the pun. (laughs) Thank you for Porpoise Robotics. We are we.